Good evening, it's VJ Franz K with a gaming video for you tonight. We're playing Bloon 6 Tower Defense, and recently uh, the game has added the map editor, which I have been interested in because I like uh, building things in whatever apps I'm using, and in this case it adds a lot of fun to the game to be able to make your own levels, including uh, for the hashtag World Peace Challenge which uh, is something you should make something for also. It's important. But um, here we have a variety of different maps that I have made in the recent past, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a map. So anyway, we have the Rabbit Ship Downs Bunny Trail, which I recently made, sort of. But... I still have it on my editor, even though I've already submitted it, so I can edit the map and I can show you what is involved in making a level with this level editor, which they may expand it later, but uh, basically, so everything is built in layers, and this is a sort of complicated 3D looking map here, but I have all of my different layers. This is actually one of the more complicated maps that I've made. So I have a layer of props, which is all of this st uh, stuff. The trees, the, the boats, and these pet rabbits everywhere. So that is on the top layer, and you can't move that up and down yet. You can't move anything over the props. But then we have area 9. These different areas that I've used, and I use the maximum number of areas, I guess, with... 10 different areas being different parts of the rabbit. It's pretty complicated. Um, the stamps, little extra bit of leaves and stuff. But then the real important thing that you deal with when p playing balloons or any tower defense game is the track, the, the path that the balloons or other creeps would follow. So I've got my paths here, and then this green area, then the water, and obviously the water, you can put um, the water units like boats and ships and stuff, and then I have a ship here that I can actually put stuff on, but I can go in and edit, edit each path, and I have these things, which are if you uh, use Illustrator, Inkscape, or um, Affinity Designer or other things with Vector Design, Coral Draw, for example, you'll know that these are Bezier curves, and you you bend you bend these extra um, handles here to change the way the lines go. It's kind of fun, but so far, there is no way to absolutely get a perfectly square corner here. Because there's always, you can't, you can't have zero, um, you can't have zero things on there. Now, you can get it closer by taking these points and then making them closer together. So, it is almost... They are, they are nearby. Well, that's kind of bent there, but eventually you can get it. You can get it pretty good. But take out all of the other stuff besides the paths. And let's see. So here is the path that the balloons actually follow. But it would be much easier to see if we start, if we start from the beginning. So what I'm going to do is now clear the map. Yes, clear, because I already submitted this map before. So it's already on the server. And unfortunately, you can't go back and edit a map that you already have edited. You, you can't go back and edit a map that you have already uploaded. The editor only is able to hold one single map. So uh, here is how to begin. 
at first you consider what is your base terrain here. And it could be this dark water. It could be light water. That's a nice texture with caustics. That's what those are called. It could be desert or beach sand. It could be this cracked um, mud texture. It could be this dark grass, which is good for night or Halloween. It could be light grass, which is good for uh, noonday sun or just a, a field. And then there's also this autumn nice texture with these leaves. And um, I don't know, it's autumn, so maybe I'll just start with that. And notice something. I'm hoping that they will add a lot more textures and other things for this editor so we can keep, keep making super unique maps to keep people entertained. It's fun to make maps and... I'll show you which maps they are. Let's see. So, most basically, this was hard to understand at the beginning, but to create a path, I click and drag here, and then I drag the road onto, onto the field. And it'll, it's coming from some point off the map. This is where the balloons start. So, perhaps I would have them coming in from the bottom and going to the top. That's unusual. So then I have this one point. Path is not long enough yet. You need some kind of length on the path before they will call it um, acceptable. And I'm adding, I'm adding points here. And adding points, and then I can have, if I click then off the thing, off this little border, I will get a, a blue marker, which becomes the end point of the map. Like the point at which the balloons win and you lose if they go through the point. So... Let's see. I can get what is approaching a square corner by, notice, pulling these handles inward. Now notice, excuse me, if I pull them, if I pull them out, that will make this wide sort of wave, a Bezier curve, right? Interesting. And it, it, it stretches the entire thing. Um, and before we had this editor, we never knew that all the maps in balloons are made with Bezier curves. We didn't realize that. But uh, here it is fairly straight. And then to get that closer, I would then also move these handles in and make sure they're, they're going in a very straight line if I want that sort of to look straight. And... I don't know, maybe I'll call this maze bow tie maze. It's not a maze. It's a map is, I guess, what they they call it. Why is it waving to one side there? Oh, it doesn't matter. See, I can still get a fairly straight look to it by doing this. So that is good. And then I say, okay. Or like... Question is, does it look cooler if it has a little bit of a bow like that? Is it more fun if it bows out like a bow tie? Or maybe add another thing here. To make um, the road, the path, begins to look a bit wrinkled the more points you have in it. So I say... Take out as many points as you can. And notice that if we already have the start and the end, then I can slide these points into the, the edge zone and still not have it be a problem. But otherwise, this would sort of create the end of the map. So, And without further ado, we should test this and just see that it is working, even though we know path verified it is long enough. 
so that they will accept it. So then I can say next and save and edit. Exit. Save and exit. So there it is. And I can now do a new game and just put my towers on here. It's fun to just watch them go along the path. Interestingly enough, they don't go under that other thing, even though the path is allowed to cross over itself. So that is all working as it is supposed to. And it would be a low effort thing to do to just turn in the map at this point and say, that's good. See, I could complete this level and then it would be eligible to turn in because you have to, you have to beat the map yourself once before you submit it just to prove that you're not, you're not putting in some impossible map that no one could beat because that would not be fun. You could make a very difficult one. You get to select what is, what is the particular difficulty of that map. And then, but anyway, I'm not going to play through the whole game because we still want to make a lot more things. For example, what if there is a cool lake right in the middle of this thing? And, yeah, you know, it's not necessarily the sky is the limit, but the ocean is the limit. You say the ocean is the limit. So I can then go here. I do home, but home here does not take me all the way to the home screen. It takes me back to this create map screen. So here I'm going to do edit map once again, and it'll... See, I can add bow tie as the tentative title here, and I could, I could save it. I could do these other things, but we'll go back and edit it once again. And it will, of course, remember the map that you are currently editing between sessions. So we already have this, and I was talking about adding some water to it. Or I could retroactively shift it to being in the ocean, but or or in the desert. But I guess it was nice with those leaves. So then you have these trains. Notice that this does not have the same sort of detailed texture built in. But add a bit of refreshing water here. And uh, once again, we're dragging from that palette into here. It, it took me a while to figure that one out also. But now I am filling out this area. It would be kind of cool if you could say match to, match to the track, match to the path automatically. But there is so far not a way to do that automatically. So you just have to manually find it and you can you can have a minimum of three points for every area because i guess two would not be that good it would just be a straight line but every area starts with four so there we have this triangular sort of thing maybe move it inward that that is kind of cool on its own way oops if I accidentally create another one, it would be good, like here, if I want to create another one and I'm clicking over here, it's just going to grab the handles. So it would, it would be good to have like discrete controls for bending the handles, for straightening out the handle to absolute zero so you get a square corner. It's possible that their engine cannot render square corners, so maybe that is why we don't have them. But here is a nice triangular lake mostly triangular, if I can get these points into zero. Good enough. And then accept it. So there it is, and it will function like a 
miniature lake or ocean so I could put my boats in this area now. Of course, there are other types of areas that you can say, like this one, which is no monkeys or other towers allowed in this area. So if you have like a scenery, this could make it difficult. You could say, I'm not sure what this does. Oh, maybe you can't, no projectiles can go through this area. I think that's what that means. But uh, this is the the darker watercolor, and then this is the lighter watercolor. They're functionally the same. And then these other areas. Like if this is in the middle of the ocean, this becomes an island of land for you. So everything works pretty much as expected. And uh, now we'll add some props also. So these are all these extra items that they have. And you know the popular houses, you can add birds, you can add little fish. Say I want a little fish. So I put it there. It's These fish are kind of small. They're almost like tadpoles or something. But since we're, we're dealing with things, ocean and critter, those are the categories. So I can rotate it in, I can rotate it um, along uh, this axis. But then, oh, it's flat. Interesting. That it's a flat thing, so you can't, Tilting it produces un unusual results, and I wish that we could move it up into the z-axis, so move it higher into the sky, and I wish we had a, a larger amount of size, because I would make this fish nice and large, but this is the maximum size so far. So just hit these once again to get that look, but here's a fish could be a koi fish or something. Then this lighter, similar fish swimming in the other direction. And notice you can't just drag to move them. You have to be in move mode here to slide them around. Okay, and another thing I can put in is a fence, a house, all of these different things. There's many different scenery items, even though I'd like even more. And I'd like to be able to change the color of things. Like, I'd like just some generic blocks and polygons and stuff. But, oh, notice, there is this inner tube. And the inner tube has a platform on it. And what is interesting about the inner tube and the platform is that you can put you can put one of your towers onto this platform. It's also a decoration ocean platform. And animation you can select that on or off. Notice it slightly is tilting there as if floating in the water. Nice. I could change the size and stuff, but I've noticed changing the size on platforms and rotation can make them not work as platforms. So hopefully they will fix that and allow us to use platforms at any rotation or something. But for now, let's just keep those in the most obvious way. That is good. I could add some logs here and they will block the darts you won't be able to won't be able to um have the darts go through change the size of this notice it says blocking and you can turn off the blocking feature if you want it just there as a scenery item but you don't want it to make things more difficult for the player Here we have rocks in a similar category, mushrooms, palm trees, flowers, pumpkins for a Halloween situation. So there's a little pumpkin, so I can make this larger. I wish I could make this even larger than that, but I'm going to extend this 
Um, let's see. Change the rotation a bit to make it more make it more interesting. And then there we go. And that is this. All right. Let's make things more interesting and give another path for the balloons to follow. And uh, this one starts at the bottom and goes around in the circle or in this bow tie shape and then goes to the top. But perhaps uh, change things up also. Do another kind of path going in another direction. So for that, I will have it, let's see, we'll do this path, which is kind of a cobblestone road or mountain path or something. And now you notice that um, always one thing can go over another thing. So I can do that, and then this, and then this. Notice if I go off that the edge of that screen, it will end the path, but I don't want to do that yet. I will here. So this, then I will do like this. See what I'm doing? I'm making the similar sort of path, but in a weird way, it is following its own its own way. And then I'll have it I'll have it leave the map up here. So we're like on, on that previous map with the bunny trail, which I suggest you play, it's one of my best maps. We had multiple paths that were tracing along a similar way, but they did their own thing. So let's see. Here we go inward and uh, like this. Like that. Basically fits. And then we can do one more thing, which I will show you. So got this map here. And then I can say green except. Now we have the order of maps. Notice path number two, path number one, area one. Now I can use this these um, arrows, just like an elevator, to lower down the priority, the, the layer order, the stacking order. Also, this is much like Adobe Illustrator. So it's like if you have designed with vectors before, it is a great way to do things. And now, now that I've changed the order of the layers to this alternate way, I can go back and make them fit the idea a little bit better. That it was sort of two, two different paths. tracing the thing. So there it goes. That's fun. Let's see, we'll look at we've we've placed a few a few of each type of item. Just to give an example here. A light. Lights can be interesting and you notice it even shines it shines a little bit of light down on everything because really Bloons is actually being rendered in, I guess, the Unity 3D engine. So even though it appears to be a 2D game, it is really a 3D game that you just don't get the viewpoint. It doesn't change the viewpoint. So that is there. And uh, 
this will block block things from going through. So that is there. And we have a variety of things. I'll show you these. These are blocks. They are boxes. Boxes. That's what they are. And you can... The box acts as a platform and blocking. You can turn off the blocking, but then it also turns off the platform. But the box, you can put units on here, and then they can... Uh, they Everything is in range on here. And the thing is, if you rotate these boxes after you place them, they may or may not work. You may or may not be able to really use them after you have placed it. But one way to get around that feature is to use the randomized placement. And what does that do? I didn't understand it at first, but notice when I grab more boxes, they will be at a random orientation. They'll be rotated in some weird way, but they will still work as boxes to put stuff on. So you have all of these different types. Just uh, show you stamps also. So you have stamps, which can be various leaves and things. And so far, you don't get to control the arrangement of these leaves yet, or of these stamps, but it would be nice to be able to do that. And you can erase individual stamps. They have a variety of different things, like these, which looks like rocks, stones in a pond or something, that you could add random rotations. And some people are using this, uh, these black sort of shade stamps to fill out an area of outer space or something. But it seems wasteful to have to use stamps to get an outer space thing. So we need an outer space we need an outer space uh, beginning for our map. But, yeah, you see how eventually I could fill up an entire large area and make it look like outer space, but so wasteful to have all of those extra s stamps um, on the graphics card. So those are stamps. I can go and erase particular stamps by doing that. So that is good. Um, let's see. These are the areas once again. So we've covered everything. Oh, yes. You get to pick one of these background effects also. So flying leaves or floating flowers or rain or these clouds floating, uh, blowing tumbleweeds for a desert or something like that. So I guess I will leave it on flowers, and you don't get to change the thing, but it would be cool to be able to adjust this in all different ways. And then, let's see, I can go here to the thing. I don't have my music on because after you've listened to the music hundreds of times, you don't want to listen to it again. So I'm going to change my music to any any one of these musics that I've bought already, I can have. But I should be able to select all the music because it's just boring to hear these common music things and it costs like a hundred trophies to buy different music. So they should just let us have it that much, even if we don't get to use it otherwise. So then I'm going to save and exit once again. So OK. So, Bowtie, you see my, you Bowtie example, see my YouTube for process, oh, whatever. That's not enough characters to say that. All right, so then I'm going to do a new game, and I'll just quickly win this level 
to prove that it is winnable. So I'll put in Admiral Brickell here and notice that she can't be there because that is where. So I'm going to place her right here near the center. Full speed ahead. And then just begin. And let's see, I will also place this free glue monkey that I have from Monkey Knowledge. I'm going to place him right here. And stickier glue. So there they are. And doing their thing. Defending as towers are supposed to do. This is going to be not a very difficult map, of course, and we just selected... Okay, so we have the sniper monkey. Notice that he cannot do his shots through these areas that are blocked off by these items, but if he is up on a platform, he can do it. But interestingly enough, because I rotated this platform, it's not working correctly. But because I didn't rotate this one, it is working correctly. So that is, a, like I said, a glitch or just an oversight in the editor there. Because he should still be able to stand on top of this box, but he just can't because it was rotated. Anyway, I'll put him on top of this box here. There he goes. Goggles. He's ready to help. Situation. And what else am I going to place here? Perhaps... Ice Monkey. It's interesting because these paths, they seem to be going the same way, but they are in fact sort of countering each other. And it will look interesting when they're going in both directions at once. Along the way. Add another stripe. Add another stripe. All right. Um, and in this corner, I'm going to put one of my submarines. It's good to use the advanced intel option on the submarines because then they sort of help fill out the entire map for you. I should have a unit somewhere here. Like, I like the Alchemist. I'm a big fan of them. And the Alchemist can throw over, can throw over other stuff. He already has permafrost on there. That's a good thing to have. Increase power. Commence fire. in this central area. I always think about where is where is the most effective place to place each unit. And when you're designing a map, you could consider you should consider obviously not just the map you are creating, but also making it able to be solved Increase power. by the players. I guess I can turn on my sound effects a little bit here. Alright, advanced intel, that's good. Now, 
he will be reinforcing everyone else on the map also. That is a very good... Let's see, we'll buy him lead to gold. So, he can start making us money. Just like that. Extra fifty dollars. Helps. And the pirate has a very long range action. Can I can I put this Oh I see. If I put this here, he's in the water, but he still can't go over these other things because that is a low level. And there isn't space on this box for more than one monkey, so so be it. But I could think about where where I might want to place the startling gunner to help out the situation. Not really thinking over my placement that much. It's a good place for it. sound again. Yes. It makes sense to have a glue a uh, monkey near your strongest units because then they get more of a chance to do their thing. As we're about to meet the first Moab, I'm going to place, I guess I can't place it on top of that pumpkin. Extra range, this time Moab Muller. There we go. This will be an easy win at this point. Target so here comes the Moab. We win. All right. So easy. So go home. I can now submit and share the map, and so I will share it. Confirm. Yes. And notice, here is the, uh, here's the code if you want to play this map that we have exactly done. Right here. I'm going to copy that, and then I can send it to my friends. I can post it to whatever other social media I want to do. But anyway, now I will go back here. And it is submitted, it's sent out to the world. So now in my maps, here it is, it's waiting for its official, I guess it's already verified. So here I can pick, I can pick it, I can play that, I can play some of my other maps, and I'll show you, maybe we'll go into this one more in depth at some other point, but this is the one I'm most proud of, I guess, because it was so complicated to make it work, but notice 3D Monkey Metaverse at Z-M-Y-A-U-K-L there. Interesting sort of pseudo 3D look, right? It's interesting. And it's, it's a bit confusing to know where all of the places to place everything are, but notice that we have Basically, the entire map is dark water, so I can place my Admiral Brickell basically anywhere she might want to be. And this is not the perfect place, but I'll just place her here. Admiral on deck. Begin. We won't play through this entire thing. But anyway, thank you for checking out my video here, and please uh, play fire. some of my maps. It's kind of... There's a lot of map editor maps that are being turned in, but, you know, I hate to say that some of these maps are kind of low effort maps. They haven't, people haven't worked, put a lot of effort into the maps, but they should. They should bother to, um, that's a hint already. And notice these other boxes, I should be able to place my monkeys on top of these boxes but I can't do it. I mostly can't do it because they are rotated in some weird way. Fire. 
and it would be good for that. Um, we have a lot of suggestions in the um, Bloon 6 tower defense thing on Steam. And I know a lot of other people are talking about it on Discord. Which I don't use that much, but... Anyway, it is, it is such a fun thing to do. And I will again do this later. And we'll talk about it more, but... Thank you so much for watching, and you can check out these maps yourself, and you can make your own maps, and please consider making something for the hashtag World Peace Challenge. And uh, that is, it's so important for our world right now. So, thank you so much, and uh, please subscribe, like, and comment below.